Taking a critical look at the gaming news of the week. This is Augmented Reality, presented by the Triple S League. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Augmented Reality Podcast, your source for news, leaks, and insights about games in the gaming industry. It is July 10th, 2019, and it is Wednesday night here in North America. If you're listening somewhere else in the world, I know that some of you, some of you folks in Europe are really crazy and like to stay up until the middle of the night to listen to this show, and we really appreciate it. And it's also, I think, uh, early morning if you're in New Zealand or Australia. So anyway, welcome to all of you who are listening live. We've got a lot of you chatting already. Ubuntu 37, Ghost Fixer, Accelerate, Zane, and uh, Russ Hunt, Terika, Winnegan, and uh, welcome to everyone else who's listening live. Please do say hello in the live chat and send us your questions and comments there as well. We will read and respond to as many as we can throughout the podcast. And don't forget to slam that like button. It likes it rough, and it tells us and YouTube that you appreciate this content. If you're listening after the fact on the audio-only platforms, we're glad you're here as well. We appreciate your likes and follows. It does take us a day or two to get the podcast up to the audio platforms, so if you want to get the latest info sooner, we encourage you to hit the link in the description to subscribe to the Triple S League YouTube channel. I'm here as always with Cybsidian, who, as I understand... Did not have the best day at work today, so, uh, you know, if you can, uh, send him some uh, some kind words in the chat. Let him you know you appreciate what he does on this podcast. I sure do. Uh, the podcast would not exist without you, sir, so uh, thanks for being here, even when you're, uh, you're not having the greatest of days. But uh, anyway, so hopefully... Uh, you, oh. you forgot to say hello to all the people who were listening in the... Under the... Um... Under the ice dome in uh, the south, uh, in south, or, <coughs> yeah, sorry, not south, in Antarctica. Ah. There's no actual like South Antarctica because it's all south. <laughs> it's all south. There's it's a, all south. There's a point yeah. in, yeah. There, there is a point in Antarctica where you can stand, and no matter which direction you're facing, you're facing north. So, um, so yeah, it's all south down there. All right, we've got some interesting and exciting stuff to talk about today. We've got a variety of things to talk about today. Um, in, uh, we're going to talk about Cyberpunk 2077, quite a number of things to go through there. Uh, some interesting announcements about Warframe that have come out of TennoCon, and so we're going to talk about that. We're also just going to talk in general about what is Warframe doing right. You know, this game has been going on for something like 14 years now, and they're clearly doing something right. If they've got you know, the, the game has enough of a backing behind it that they that it can support its own conference. Uh, obviously, lots of people like it and lots of people are playing it. Plus, uh, we've got an announcement of a new Lord of the Rings MMO. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. First, a bit of rapid-fire news. Cuphead is getting a Netflix series. It's going to be an animated Netflix comedy series based on Cuphead. And uh, I, I really want to know why. I mean, it's cool. <laughs> It is. I'm. I'm very interested to see what they do with it. I think it's a great game. You. You played it. You loved it. Uh, I, I did. think just generally, it's a. It's a smart. It's a really smart, interesting game. Very, very, very cool. But why on earth? Well, that. Sh- like I just. I don't. How did that even happen? Like. Like what was the process of like? Hey, let's turn this into a. a on TV show. Well, from The Hollywood Reporter, the 2017 indie game has sold over 4 million copies worldwide. And, uh, the, you know, the developers were, were incredibly surprised by the, by the popularity of the game. And, and you know, uh, there, there was another article I was reading where one of the guys from Studio MDHR, who it's run by two brothers, who, who created Cuphead, um, they said, you know, we didn't even think we were going to make any other games after Cuphead. We, we thought we were going to go back to our day jobs. But the game just exploded and took off, and so now they're, you know, they're they're in game development full time. But yeah, here from the Hollywood Reporters, Netflix and King Feature Syndicate are bringing the massively popular indie platforming game Cuphead to the streaming platform with a new animated series, The Cuphead Show. Um, Cuphead launched a critical acclaim in 2077, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The new animated comedy will expand upon the characters and world of the game, which centers on titular hero Cuphead and his brother Mugman who make a deal with the devil in high stakes gambling match uh, it goes through some of the people who are working on it there's some you know people who have worked on other popular shows um, and then the final paragraph of this article here Cuphead is the latest video game to be adapted to the small screen following earlier announcements of a live action series based on The Witcher 
coming to Netflix, a Halo series in production at Showtime, an adaption of Ubisoft's Skull and Bones. I This was a surprise to me. Skull and Bones. It's not even out. It's been delayed. And there, there's some kind of a... There's some kind of a show or film coming based on that i had not heard of that and also uh, a telev- a film and television u- universe built around the computer game mist in the works at village road show so uh, wait wait wait. There, oh yeah no wait i knew about that i i didn't right. know i i might have heard about that one actually but anyway yeah, yeah so no, i mean video no, we, games. we covered that one when it was first announced People, um, uh, i still i'm still really surprised by that because i don't know very many people aside from like really old school gamers who know even what mist was and the fact that it basically set off this new like explosive growth in pc gaming like there were a lot of games that contributed to the the explosion but mist in general was one of those ones where it was like everybody was playing that that had a computer everybody was playing it everybody loved it it got lots of moms and and dads into it my dad really enjoyed it for quite a while and the fact that we never got, you know, a, a concrete series out of it was always surprising to me. But a new TV show? Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Right. And anyway, so they, they've been trying video game movies for a long time. Now they're, you know, they're working on uh, TV shows. The um, uh, They did Castlevania a while back on, on Netflix. Uh, I only watched, I think, the first couple episodes. It wasn't my thing, but... The, it did seem like a, a quality show. So hopefully they do something similar with, or not similar. I mean, it'll be very different stylistically, but, but um, anyway, hopefully it'll be, it'll be really great. Uh, reports are that the Cuphead show, um, uh, it'll, 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 it'll be insanely difficult to get through each episode. And, uh, you know, you'll, you'll have to make many, many, many tries at, at each episode to, in order to get through it. Um, but it'll be very satisfying when you do. Uh, but, uh, you know, no word yet on whether game journalists will be able to get through the trailer. Yeah. So, um, anyway, I can't take credit for those jokes. I got those from the, but the a Reddit three, a Reddit thread that, that I found, but to paraphrase one of our community members, notional, uh, imagine nailing the style of an old cartoon so well that you actually get to make an old timey cartoon. Um, that's what CD, is that's that, what, uh, is, Studio MDHR has pulled off. That's so bizarre, isn't it? Yep. That's it's like, it's... wow. <laughs> so yes. Anyway, Cuphead show could be interesting. I'm hoping for something great. It could be a disaster like anything could possibly, you know, anything could be a disaster, but I'm hoping for something great. Irish Flynn, thank you so much for the super chat. Irish Flynn says, always great stuff from you guys. Well, I really appreciate it, especially right at the beginning of the show. Um, to hear that so glad you appreciate the show um i don't want to talk about this too much but we we mentioned last show on saturday about how leonard boyarski co-director of the outer worlds at obsidian and made a statement about how they're not trying to make the game overtly political not to say that it doesn't contain political themes but that they they don't want to preach at players they don't want to make a statement with the game necessarily and, uh, every you... every game has political themes if you look hard enough. Well, yeah. Now, I mean, whether or not those political themes were intended by the by the developers or relevant to intelligent human beings is up for significant debate. Um, you know, there, there's there's some games like the the little Lego game uh, came out uh, many many years ago. The um, kind of the original like open world the first open world Lego game that was. Um, yeah, really interesting, really cute, really fun and kind of stylish and, and kind of unique. Um, definitely didn't have any political mean, like political anything. But if you looked hard enough, you could kind of maybe make that argument. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway... He's been catching some criticism and some flack. I don't know how wide how widespread it is, but it mostly seems to be coming from uh, from nobodies on Twitter, that kind of a thing. But there are some there are some high profile interv- individuals taking shots at him for this, and I just wanted to uh, say, you know, if you if you appreciate what what uh, Obsidian is doing, 
um, or and what Leonard is doing. He's not very active on Twitter. I went to tweet him today, and I don't think he ever checks his Twitter. He's tweeted like one thing in the past five years, so uh, I didn't. It didn't really seem to make sense to to at him in a tweet. But you know, if you if you support this stance, let the developer know. Let the developer you know you don't want to be preached at in your games. You don't want to. You want to be treated like an adult who can process complex themes and uh, come up with your own conclusions about things. You know, he's getting there. There's a high profile game developer who is somewhat notorious who um, she came to some level of fame uh, is connected with uh, what, what should we call it? It's 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 an issue that you can't safely mention on YouTube. Oh, cool. OK, OK. Well, well, first of all, it's let's so some random person who's not a game developer. Let's make that quite clear because they haven't ever made a game uh, is not connected to any serious gaming company um just likes to talk about games sometimes and by talk about i mean hurl insults and venom at mm-hmm. um this person who uh i we, you know I, gee i can't really think of the name right now it kind of escapes me mostly because they're so uh what's the term um irrelevant um but they made a very very disgusting kind of like charge Mm -hmm. so i don't know if you want to read well uh, this this individual is connected with the gg movement that's all i'm going to say about that um so uh and they said you know between this that ubisoft guy cyberpunk 2077 and the other weasels who are trying to ham-fistedly tackle social commentary that's out of their depth while remaining neutral about which side of injustice is bad i think we're in for a bunch of years of shitty releases buds and uh, she posts a couple of screenshots of Leonard Boyarsky's statements. And wow, yeah. Now, just... I don't recommend, like, you can go look at the Twitter thread if you want, but I don't recommend act, you know, <laughs> don't responding recommend to this either. person. Um, that just gives... Yeah, it gives them, give it gives them, them credence. Remember, remember when I said they're irrelevant? Yeah, they're irrelevant. Well, I mean, they're, that you they're, don't... they're relevant enough that we're mentioning them here. And, and, and I do say that, you know... Uh, only to cover the only to cover the general like thought that is yeah but i read some of them i've read some of the most disgusting stuff i've read in a long time in this twitter thread and i've seen leonard boyarski referred to as an mfer at at least three individual times for this for this very I, i i don't even get how this statement he made is controversial he says there are people in the game who have philosophies he's talking about the outer worlds now There are people in this game who have philosophies that I don't agree with, and I take pains to make those people very likable, very sensible, and very believable. There are people in the game who say things I agree with, who are perhaps not very nice to hang out with. And he goes on to say the the reason they do this is they don't want to create a straw man. They don't want to, you know, try to subtly influence. They want to try and be as objective as possible and and as, um, you know, put as reasonable as possible in, in examining different sides of various issues. And, um, someone responded like, Oh, I, uh, that's, that's a funny way of saying you have terrible, horrible beliefs. I was like, where do you even get that from? I yeah. Where, where that they're, tr- what they're trying to say is they're trying to make a nuanced, uh, complex, realistic story with complex characters who have different beliefs and different levels of likability, kind of like we have in real life. And yet, the uh, the OP, whose who's quote about Ubisoft Cyberpunk and, and whatnot um, that I read earlier, <laughs> responded to this statement and said, Thank you. You know, uh, I, you know basically completely 100% agreeing. I was like, how ridiculous is that? First of all, it's not even what he said. It, it, it was ridiculous, but it made me th- like, I, I just don't understand. Do these people understand what a good story is? Um, no, the no, they really don't. Because I was thinking about what is one of the best villains we've had in media in a long time. So Th- let, let me let me I, I right? can I can talk about a couple of, of villains and I don't want to talk about recent villains because it's. A, villain, a good villain stands the test of time, and we don't know if Thanos will stand the test of time. So let's let's talk about some some villains that stand that actually stand the test of time. Um, so you got the Joker, 
uh, you know, he stands the test of time, you know, really, really well. Um, you've got Cru- here's here's a here's a good one, Cruella Deville, who kills puppies for fashion. Yeah. So I, again, again, it's like it's like ah, that's a kids movie, but no, she's a pretty good villain. It's like the live action version of her wasn't that great, but she really is quite good when you uh, when you get down to the brass tacks. She's quite uh, mm-hmm. quite the quite the firebrand that that is you know that it's good it, it's good to kind of see this character this way and it and you know i think that it, they make a, a very good villain right um, well here here's the thing though i i i had a point that where i was going with that with uh, with saying oh, okay. thanos i mean um i should say you know in my opinion thanos is one of the best villains we've seen in a long time because one of the one of the most dangerous types of villains is the villain who truly believes in something and believes that they're their evil way of doing things is the correct one. And so you have this villain who's on this mission to wipe out half of the population of the universe because he believes it's the right thing to do. And in Avengers, um, you know, in Infinity War and then in Endgame, they have they have moments where you get insights into his thought process. And, uh, you know, talking about how, you know, he wiped out the population, half the population of this one planet and... Uh, now you know the, the poverty uh, levels have lessened and, and things like that. Um, you know, he he wants to fight these problems and he he believes in doing this dispassionately. You know, not giving any preference to you know rich or poor or someone's social status when when discuss, deciding whether or not to wipe them out. I don't agree, of course, with with his approach, but. Um, he he truly believes in something, and that what make that's what you, makes him such a dangerous villain, especially when he gets the power that he craves. And in my opinion, well, I, like, I so I I really want to add to this, and th- and that is that that it's funny because there are a lot of people right now, and a very a large amount of them, who would wipe half of the universe out based on like just their just the way that some people think that a you know a free society should operate in so Mm -hmm. it's it's kind of Mm -hmm. scary that there's there's this this much like insanity um around a this concept it's like wow that's uh that's some intense stuff yeah then the joker you mentioned the joker and that people are talking about him in the live chat yeah the joker is another uh i mean there's been many different iterations but you look at the the joker in like the dark knight series the he's a he's another excellent villain uh for a completely different reason he is a complete megalomaniac he's the guy that just wants to watch the world burn right he was just a he was just insane but believably insane so uh you know so anyway depending on the iteration of the joker you're talking about there have been good ones and bad ones but um yeah so in both cases joker and thanos you have characters that are you know, they have gone off track for completely different reasons, but they're both believable, complex characters. That's what makes a good story. You know, have if if the if the main villain in Star Wars was just the head stormtrooper, I mean, how bland would that be? No, you you have your Darth Vader's, you have your Emperor Palpatines, um, to to really have that that core level of of moral complexity and, and, uh, and yeah, basically the moral complexity of a story. So, and, uh, so yeah, so a game that makes you think, I loved the, uh, Deus Ex series because it, it, they did make me think about a lot of these things, but at the same time, wasn't preachy that I can recall. Anyway, I want to get off this topic, but, uh, I just wanted to mention that. And yeah, if you appreciate what, uh, what the Outer Worlds is doing, if you appreciate what Cyberpunk 2077 is doing uh let these companies know that that's what you want let the other game developers know this is what you want from your games and uh hopefully we'll get more of it all right speaking of cyberpunk 2077 we've got some news to go into some really interesting stuff and uh oh i just wanted to respond to a message uh that i'm sorry i can't find it right now oh uh 
in response to anything could be a disaster, Kubin Wilkie says, uh, blasphemy, not Cyberpunk 2077. Don't jinx it. You know what? I stand corrected. Of course. Now, I, I was referring specifically to TVs and, and movie, TV shows and movies based on video games. So, um, you know, bit of uh, bit of context correction there, but yeah, absolutely. I, I, I that's highly unlikely that Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven will be a disaster. That's Our, extremely unlikely. CDPR's Twitter <sighs> account uh, reported on July eighth, just a couple days ago, that one in three Cyberpunk. 2077 pre-orders for PC have been made on GOG, so that's a full one-third of the PC pre-orders have happened on GOG. And that is, uh, they, they express their appreciation to the community for the support, and that's great to see, I mean, especially considering GOG, you know, all you'll pay the same price as you will on Steam or anywhere else, but all of your money will go to CD Projekt. So, that's where I'll be buying the game. Speaking of GOG, I have been given access to the GOG Galaxy 2.0 beta. It looks really interesting. I, I like where they're going with it. It's a beta. Not all of the features work, but uh, one thing that I have really liked right off the bat is that I can incorporate all of my different... Um, you know, I can incorporate my entire game library in one place. Of course, like, 98% of it is Steam games, but, you know, I can, I can, I can put everything in there and sort them by installed or uninstalled. I can sort them alphabetically. I can sort them by what I've played most recently. There's just, I love the organizational aspects of it. So uh, that's that's one thing I'll say right off the bat. Um, so anyway, looking forward to digging into it a little more and we'll be producing a video on it. Um, Saib, I don't think you've had the chance to, to install it and try it out yet, have you? Uh, no, I, I actually, um, I've been way, 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 way too busy um yeah but i have been have been whitelisted for it i just need to actually like get around to installing it here it's mm -hmm. been it's been a little busy and uh neon you're absolutely right mojo jojo is also another great villain mm -hmm. neon also neon arcade also in chat another great cyberpunk youtuber if you if you, if you you're already familiar with him if you of course have seen our uh, cyberpunk 2077 community podcast but anyway um Neon sort of concurs. Uh, I just got the beta. It's good, but pretty feature light at the moment. Yeah, it is. It looks like there's going to be more stuff added, but I'm like I, I like what I'm seeing thus far, and a lot of the integrations are not official yet. They've they're community made because they've made their they've made it all like open sourced as far as you know how you can integrate different platforms into this. So uh, aside from the X the Xbox integration is the only official one at this point. Steam. Epic, um, and then, you know, EA and Ubisoft and anything else you want to integrate, it's all integration uh, platforms, or, or I don't know what you'd call it. They're integrations that have been created by the community. And so, and uh, not everything works on them, but it looks like looks like more is coming. So yeah, yeah. anyway, one in third, coming. so one third of the pre-order has been made on GOG. <laughs> And that's great to see. So that's that's extra money in CDPR's pocket, and it's just it's a great show of support for the developer, honestly. And I love seeing that because they're one of those developers that are doing things that are doing things right. Had a couple of interviews, actually, yeah, a couple of interviews with uh, a spokesperson and UI coordinator for CD Projekt, Alvin Liu. Now, these interviews happened at E3, I believe, but they're with uh, two different outlets, and they're just kind of coming out now. So Alvin Liu, when asked about, you know, are we going to see more surprises in terms of actors in the game? You know, we had the big reveal with Keanu Reeves. Are there going to be more surprises in terms of celebrity actors or familiar faces we're going to see in the game? His response to Video Game Chronicle was, um, I can't comment on that. You guys are going to have to wait and see. So... It's not a no. And uh, then he also had an interview with WCCF Tech. And uh, he was asked about whether or not it's it's a challenge to optimize the game for lower end hardware. And he said, actually, no, we have a very custom engine, the red engine. And actually, we're targeting consoles as first class platforms. And it looks amazing there. So obviously, if you spent, you know, $2,000 building your PC rig, it's going to look better than that, but the graphics are quite amazing for what you're going to get on consoles and low-end PCs. So, 
Uh, Saib, I know you have something to say about this, but there was a couple of there was one article in particular that took this and uh, somehow drew from it that Cyberpunk is going to look best on the PS5 and Project Scarlet, the new Xbox. That was the headline, which yep. that was baffling because that is not at all the point of, of what he was saying. Which uh, was then changed. Yeah, they to... they did change the headline after that. I, which which again goes to show that that most gaming journalists have no clue what they're doing, generally speaking. There's just not a level of competency for for most stuff. I have another um, little event that happened this week. I won't I won't go into too many details on it, um, but there was uh, somebody who was very upset. That something was done in a very dishonest manner, um, and that how dare somebody post um, something that they haven't disclosed all their connections about. And I went, huh, that's funny. I seem to recall doing a video about that just recently. Kind of, kind of uh, reached out to uh, get their uh, get their feedback on that, and they blocked me. So that was that was fun. I. I Oh yes, I always, yes, I know what you're talking about. I always enjoy getting um, blocked by uh, by incompetent hypocrites. It's, it's very <laughs> nice. It's to, to put it to put it mildly, you know, not telling you how I really feel about it, but um, which I'm not upset about being blocked by an incompetent hypocrite. It's just it's just it's funny that this is a that this is a thing that happens a lot, mm-hmm. and you think, wow, you know, gee, makes sense, right? Nope. No, not really. So, hmm. eh, it's 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 bizarre. It's so bizarre. So, yeah. Anyway, I mean, it sounds like Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven is going to be uh, is going to look really good even on lower end hardware. It's made for current generation consoles, which you know we've been reporting for a long time. Uh, yeah, which which and, are and they're... not the next gen consoles. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you can't even play this game day one on these consoles unless they've already set it up for backwards compatibility mm-hmm. that we know of as of yet. Now, the, obviously, they're probably going to be working on a, on a day one uh, version of it or a day one way to play it or something like that. But for the most part, it's as far as we've been told, there's been no official anything given that they're going to be available on the new consoles um, on day one. And yet this intelligent journalist goes out of his goes out of their way to uh, proclaim that that this is indeed the best way to view the game and well, you have when to wonder like what yeah. what the what the guy was saying is that that this game has been optimized and I've been saying this for what two years now almost two years this game has been optimized so well that this is the number one technical pursuit was to make this game smooth and work well without having to rely on on heavy hardware and this is what we're going to get this is what happens when you actually invest a lot of time and resources into your um into your your engine and making it smooth and making it work and and fleshing out the bugs and every day you're trying to find out you know more ways that you can improve the system each day you're going to the the modding sites and the the fan sites to see if anybody else has come up with some really interesting way of of handling technology which is really kind of funny because like there was a um, for Skyrim, somebody created a, a, a it was a female um, programmer. She created this very brilliant program to allow for um, like these these this physics system that was just brilliant in the game and and worked off of some some you know generally similar stuff. But she had to program the thing from the ground up, and Bethesda didn't hire her. <laughs> Didn't hire her to come and work for them to help improve their next game or their next game or their next game, and and to me that's always shocking that that you have somebody who's you know makes Caliente is in the same boat as that where it's like she's a brilliant brilliant um, you know finish model finisher and and she makes amazing amazing systems still not hired don't know why might have something to do with uh, the the um, the uh, full uh, Monty of visual features that they also tend to include could be that, but most likely it's 
Most likely, it's, it's it's some form of like click or something. That's that's all I can figure because I, I don't I don't understand it or get why this wouldn't be a thing. I don't know. Anyway, we're off on a we're off on a tangent there, but yeah, Sorry, yeah, yeah. As we've been talking about for a while, uh, CDPR has been has been working diligently on like they've been optimizing this engine from the beginning of development. It's not something they left to the last minute, as as ha- as happens with some games. So. This is, but this is an a this is a situation where you have a, a, an extreme technical advantage in that they have their own in-house engine that they own and developed. They're also developing the game for the engine, so those two teams can work in tandem to make the engine for the game and the game for the engine. And they're also going to be publishing the game themselves. So you have you have these three major areas that that are all under their under unified control you know contrast that with a game like anthem where you have just a disastrous uh you know a a, a disaster in management you have the publisher of the game imposing certain things that the developers don't necessarily want to want to do or like and um imposing an engine on them that the game that the was not built for that type of game and that just causes all kinds of problems and that's how you have five years of development and uh you know at least 80 percent of that was literally wasted and then you get you get a game that was built in nine months and is is completely empty so so anyway that's one of the things that cyberpunk or that cd project rather is is doing right with this game they uh they have everything's in-house everything's in-house and they've and they've they've even got their own distribution platform in gog so uh yeah they they have all these things going for them. They seem to be managing it well. And uh, and I really like that. So, uh, yeah, I think we're going to get a quality product. So, anything more to say on that as far as what, what CDPR is doing right with Cyberpunk 2077? Because then we're going to transition into talking about what Warframe is doing right. Because they seem to be doing quite well for themselves as well. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. So, um... All right, I'm just going to take a moment here to let you know that uh, we love seeing all of the activity in the in the live chat. And if you want to keep the conversation going after the live broadcast, we welcome you to join our Discord community. You can find the link in the description below. It's a place where you can chat with us and other Triple S community members about all the things we love to talk about and stay up to date about everything we're doing here at the Triple S League. Click the link below to join and be sure to say hi to us in the welcome channel. And... Yeah, there's always all kinds of great conversations going there. Had a lot of fun uh, talking about Futurama with a couple people this morning. One of my favorite shows. I, I've got to go. It's it stemmed from a it stemmed from a, a conversation about cyberpunk, um, and 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 someone saying they wanna they wanna mod themselves to the max in Cyberpunk 2077, and then complain about the fact that they can't mod themselves even more. And I was like, hey, there's a there's a Futurama episode where where Hermes did that. Uh, he, he, he literally, uh, he got addicted to cybernetic enhancements. It's a really funny episode. All right. Anyway, so Warframe, um, so the, the conference for Warframe, the big conference is called Tenocon, and that just happened recently. It's over now, but some really interesting announcements for the game came out and I'm not really a Warframe player. I played it for a grand total of two hours, I believe, but Cybe, you've played it a lot more. Yeah, it's a free. Uh, would you call it an MMO? What would you call it? It's a multiplayer online game, but. Mm. What in terms of? Yeah, the... it's it's uh, so. I mean, it is kind of like a. It's not an MMO. It's like a stage based um, MMO, but it's becoming more and more like an MMO every day. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a very it's a very popular uh, multiplayer team based um, combat game. And uh, it yeah. does have stage-based missions, but they're they're constantly adding more features to it. Yeah, and they're they're adding yes, and they're adding a big, uh, they're adding another like huge open world kind of zone, and they're they're really progressing on that kind of stuff. Um, there is kind of like this big callback. It's like, hey, come back to the game. Um, there's this really cool trailer that they did for that, and there's a bunch of other stuff that they're putting out. There's a big battle war going on. Um, and it's it's really interesting. I'm I'm, you know, seeing the game evolve and seeing them 
put so much time and effort into it. It's like they do it right and they do it very well. And this is what I think, honestly, people want from this the, this experience. Yeah. They they want more of this content. They want more of this drive to make things better, to make things uh, you know more more unique, more um, you know special. Mm -hmm. And I completely agree with that. It's it's brilliant the way that they're they're putting it and that they're building it and that they're you know building off of this stuff too. <clears throat> And they have, uh, they have so much. It's clear that they're showing that they have so much more that they can grow and so many more directions that they can move in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we over have... overall, really, really, really impressed with it. Yeah, we've praised Fortnite for what it's worth for, you know, its constantly evolving world, and and we have we've suggested that that has contributed to its its success with with gamers and its insane popularity. The fact that they do tell kind of a meta story through the game world itself, even though it's just this, uh, you know, battle royale shooter, every game is, has essentially the same premise. You, you, you get dropped in the map and shoot people until you come out on top or until your team wins or whatever. So the, but they, they change things up. They tell a story with the map. And, and so, you know, that keeps things interesting for the players. Uh, looks like Warframe has been doing exactly this for about 14 years now. And uh, all the way back to when it was it was first announced as Dark Sector, and then you know uh, got marketed as Warframe, and you know it's 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 kept to the same basic thread, the ba same basic um, uh, same basic lore. In fact, I was watching a video that you sent me, Sive, about a guy comparing um, some of the stuff in the brand new trailers, how they've connected it back, and 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 like the 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 new content that's going to be added to this game in the near future really connects back lore wise to the the very first trailer for dark sector and so they've really kept this these threads going through and so longtime players are going to have things they can look back at and be like oh yeah this all connects in a lot of ways but they're constantly adding new things and changing them they're going to be adding uh ship to ship combat they, uh, something called the duviri paradox which uh, i've read is a new open world zone in the game that has some new things in it and I watched the trailer for it, got some uh, got some Death Stranding vibes from it. It's that kind of weird, surreal kind of a, an environment. Uh, they've revamped the tutorial. There's going to something, a new campaign or quest line called The New War. And uh, I don't know a lot about any of this stuff. But, I mean, it sounds like a ton of stuff that they're adding in. They're not just kind of keeping keeping on with the same old, same old. And the game is free to play. You know, that's mm -hmm. uh, and, and they monetize it really, really well. I like guess it's, it's responsibly monetized. Uh, it's a little confusing for some of the stuff. It's like uh, you, you definitely need to, if you're new to it, you definitely need to make liberal use of guides and stuff like that. But um, yeah, overall, it's it's a it's a pretty fascinating take on it, and, and I hope that they get better with it over mm -hmm. time. So and I and I think they will. So. Mm -hmm. So what what else do you want to say in the department of what they're doing right? You know that's kind of, you know that's what we put up on the on the thumbnail today. Games. Well, done their right. their communication it's their communication. Like, good lord, everybody can learn how to communicate, um, the way that that studio does. They're open. They're honest. They're clear. They're concise. They speak reasonably, directly. Um, they make it uh, they make it very clear what they're doing. Uh, why they're doing it um, they they they're very good at what they do uh, this is and it's like yeah about time like honestly about time I I can't believe it it's taken so long for any company to realize that this is the standard at which you're you should be working um, you know wow and and uh, blizzard they, they try to do that every once in a while Um and then they, when they really mess up, they try to do it a little bit better, uh, but oftentimes they just keep dropping the ball. And they, and they have like, as soon as they're back on top, as soon as they're number one again, they lose. They just put aside all of those important things, and they just totally forget about them. Hmm. And it's like they totally forget about us, the players. And they're not interested in us, the players. They're only interested in us, the players, as as you know, pay pigs basically for for whatever content or game or 
microtransaction garbage they're putting out and and it gets tiring after a while and and again it's like it's like a yo-yo it's like Mm -hmm. blizzard will will respond and speak respectfully when they feel that you know they need to they need to earn that they will turn around and treat you like garbage the second that they don't think they need you Mm -hmm. and and they'll treat their audience like garbage and this has been a constant yo-yo with them for for so long i can't even yeah it's just it's just it's it's really messed up Mm mm-hmm And speaking of monetization, we had that story this week about uh, a there was a family who uh, the uh, the kids emptied their parents' bank account with uh, with, with uh, FIFA Ultimate Team. Is that the name of the game, FIFA Ultimate Team? So uh, no, the, well, yeah, it's sort of the name. It's it's FIFA Ultimate, and then they they have like uh, they have the they have the the team components of it or you you do random draws random draws random draws random yeah. draws and it, the odds are so bad that they gave out like fifty thousand dollars to people to open live and none of them got any any of the top end like players yeah, yeah. it's disgusting it's, plus it's, i learned zero point zero 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 one or something like that to get these like awesome players and most of these players not no most uh there's there are players that they that don't see a dime of that money and that's really disgusting yeah um but there is uh i mean i learned in watching videos about this this week that it's a game you actually pay for i thought it i assumed it was a free-to-play game that you would that, that they then monetize the crap out of but no you actually buy this game and then if you want if you want any kind of a decent team you've got to shell out microtransactions for loot boxes that basically you're gambling on whether or not you will get any kind of a decent player. Anyway, in the case of this one family, the uh, you know the, the the kids figured out how to, um, and and these they're are all kids under account. ten. These are all kids under ten. They figured out how to to buy these loot boxes in the game on their Nintendo Switch, and it was like five hundred pounds or something. Um, yeah, it was a little over eight hundred bucks uh, USD. So, yeah. So now the um now Nintendo Nintendo uh in another shining moment of of uh you know just showing how <laughs> it was a good thing Nintendo did they uh they refunded the money and they you know they they deactivated the the stuff that had been bought but they gave them a full refund on this which was I thought a class act on Nintendo's part EA of course EA Hi. didn't do that. EA did not Nintendo, even comment. Nintendo pay Nintendo paid that out of their own pocket, and 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 EA sat there going, "What? What? Well, it's my money now. It's my money. It's my money now." Well, it's like, do we know that for sure that EA like? Do we, do we know what for sure that, that they didn't get any garbage? that 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 EA that EA actually got the money and is sitting on the money. Oh no, they, they they get the money. Yeah, but it's, like, it's a microtransaction. I thought uh, because Nintendo thing. refunded it, I thought that maybe they still had the money in their possession and hadn't passed it on to EA. No, 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 no. But... that that stuff goes through that stuff goes through almost instantaneously. Okay. Um, you, you Google has a system in which you can like repeal an uh, a purchase, but you have to do it within like it's something crazy. It's like fifteen minutes. Hmm. It's like wow, wow, and 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 if it's like so, you're buying like ten packs, and then you open those ten packs. If you open those ten packs and you're not happy with what you get, you can't refund the money. No, you of have course to not. have those uh, ten packs not. in your inventory, not opened, and then be like, oh no, I I didn't get this. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, you know, you you can't do that. You have to you have to have not opened them at all, and then Google will. Sent or use the currency or the diamonds or the the time refreshes or whatever. It's like it's like hmm. yeah. it's it's really 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 disgusting. Anyway, how did we get onto this? We were talking something about what games were doing right, and then uh, EA but came no, up somehow. But no, you you talked about you're talking about the family that that lost eight hundred dollars. Yeah, the, uh, the the family that that the kids somehow the kids were able to basically empty their parents' bank account with. Uh, with this i mean thankfully it was only a small amount of money and they did get it refunded well a small amount of money that's a lot of money to some people that's a lot of money to me 
quite frankly. I just mean it, at least, you know, it wasn't like thousands of dollars that would bankrupt them kind of a thing, but it's still a lot of money. Well, I mean, I mean, it, it would bankrupt them to them. They're living paycheck to paycheck. It's, it's part of the the problem with old times right now. But any, at any rate, so and anyway, yeah, basically, that's not an example of what games are doing right. I think that was my no, point. No, a, that's an that's an example of what these companies are doing wrong, and they refuse to admit. Now, there a, a breaking story came out just a few hours ago. I haven't been able to check it out, vet it, or whatever. But apparently, the government has given only eight, uh, has given the um, the gaming industry like eighteen months to respond or to clean up their act or to provide definite positive uh, information that their their microtransaction stuffs are not uh, akin to gambling. Um, it's, it's a long time, and I really wish that that was like eight weeks tops that that's what it should have been it's like you know if again if i were them i would have like said okay you you've got you know you've got um you've got 18 hours to show me why this isn't uh and and i know that you have any company that in that turns around and invests a hundred billion dollars into a feature into a game feature has done every possible test they could possibly do on exactly every repercussion and format that that works out to and there was a guy doing a, a sh um kind of like a lecture on this and he right he right away right at the right at the top of the thing he was like oh hey um just so you know this is how we make these microtransactions and uh, you know so we're just gonna we're just gonna not talk about the morality of this that's what he said he says we're not we're gonna we're not gonna talk about the morality of of whether it's good to to create ways that just focus on doing nothing but separating players from their money uh, and, and giving them a cheap, cheap, repetitive thrill that makes them addicted. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's like, great, awesome. If, if I were that judge, I would have said 18 hours, get all of your data here right now or we're going to ban this outright. And by doing so, they would bankrupt the company. So that would force the company to do one of two things. Either that would force the company to stop all microtransactions, period, which which would probably be the result if the when the court got a look at the the data and the information, or they would turn that around and immediately basically be like, um, you know, refuse to hand over the stuff, which which the result would be the same. And this is this is an extension of what's going on in the this is the UK government that is has um, has said this, and this is an extension of. The, con yeah, the, the, the conversation little, that they had with uh, Epic couple weeks, Games or a couple and with days ago, EA. Yeah. Absolutely. And here's it, it's the fact that it is gambling. You pay an exorbitant. That was the other thing about it. First of all, that you actually have to pay for FIFA, this FIFA game. Like, it's it's not a full, I don't know. It was like, I can't remember if it was a full AAA price, but it was, it was at least two-thirds of that. Plus, then these player packs are exorbitantly priced. Yeah, they're ridiculous. Like they're absolutely the price, ridiculous. Two of them costs like the price of a full AAA game, or or something. It was ridiculous. Plus, then the fact that you don't even know, you don't know what the odds are of of getting a particular player or particular team members that you want. Plus, it you know it's a complete gamble. You could get a bunch of crap, and I don't know if there are chances of getting duplicates or what, but it's it's garbage. And they're trying to say this isn't gambling. They're trying to say. This is a fun mechanic. This is surprise mechanics. Yeah, surprise mechanics. This it's is great. Uh, great. it's it's a bunch of garbage. Anyway, that's um, so that's yeah that's another story that happened this week that's sort of tangentially related because um, yeah we have in Warframe we do have microtransactions. Um, they correct me if I'm wrong. They do not have loot boxes. No, it's not. There's no surprise boxes. No surprise boxes, and it's a free to play game. And mm -hmm. quite frankly, I think if people love it enough that and and they monetize um, player created items. So if a player mods in, like goes in and, and mods a really cool armor set, and the devs will look at the armor set and go, "Hey, really good job!" And this fits the lore. This uh, this looks good. It's well done. Then they add it to the game, and every time somebody buys it, the the modder gets a cut of that money. That's really cool, actually. That's really yeah. cool, and I think. And like in my opinion, if you're going to monetize a game with microtransactions, that's the way to do it. You make it free, you make a high quality game that people love enough that they want to uh, 
you know, and that they know they're going to play long term. So it's worth them putting some money into getting the cool skins and getting the cool different things, you know, that they, that they, I don't have a problem with that at all, quite frankly. Uh, not at all. It's, no, uh, makes sense. it's loot boxes and predatory. Well, we may end up stuff. we may end up doing some more uh, let's plays and some more streaming of some um, some uh, you know now that now that I've uninstalled a whole whack of games from my system because well they were all garbage um, yeah it's, I've got enough room to to maybe give Warframe another kick around the can and and especially if they've got this like it it seems to be they seem to be hinting at this like enhanced character customization thing uh some faces and stuff and that would be honestly that that would that's really what i want from that game because um i the way that the game is structured i don't really like the way that the experience system in the game is structured i don't like switching frames constantly Mm -hmm. i really 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 don't like it i only click with one frame in the game I'm only, it's not that I'm not good at the other frames, it's that I only get enjoyment out of playing a single frame. And using two weapons. Hmm. There's two weapons that are my favorite, um, and then there's like there's like one or two other weapons that I, that I kind of more or less enjoy as well. And if it were me, I would be sitting with, um, with, the, with the same primary weapon, uh, or second, yeah, with one of the same, like one primary weapon, that I really like, one melee weapon that I really like, and then I would have my one frame, and then I would rotate in some sidearms and, and a secondary weapon from time to time. Mm-hmm. And and trying to level up when you're doing that is painful. It is absolutely painful. And I can't I cannot stand that that you know, I can only level up because I'm only leveling up one thing. Because you cap out the, the other items and then that's it. You have to you know, you can reset them sometimes, but that's expensive and it's hard and you can't do it all the time and it doesn't always, like, uh, there's, a, there's a point where you just do it too much and then you just don't get anything out of it and, and you know, it's like, well, how do you how do you get more XP? How do you, like, grow your character faster, get more experience? Oh, just try a brand new, a different Warframe and all different weapons. It's like, ah, uh, yeah, but I really don't want to do that. <laughs> I, I like really just want... I I really just click with this one frame and this this one weapon and I want to get really really good at both of them and it's like well then just keep resetting them one by 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 one and I and I can't I it, it drives me mental I can't that and that's the that is the only reason why I stopped playing the game originally is because I I just can't stand the because it increases the repetition right instead of running ten missions to get another level you have to run you know, 40 missions because you're not getting an XP on everything. You're only getting an XP on like one thing. Hmm. And, and it's like, I, this, so that, this that comes only... down to play style. Then it doesn't yeah, click with no, your play this, style. This, this whole play style thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and as I, and as I have said many, 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 many times, I will never, ever, ever give a negative review or a negative, um, feedback for a game based entirely off of, off of gameplay preference. It's like if you and and we harped on on a certain large name uh, reviewer. Um, this large reviewer came out and said, "I don't like this game, so therefore I'm giving this game a, a severe minus in this category of gameplay because I don't like this kind of gameplay." Mm-hmm. It's like then you shouldn't be reviewing it, you pompous jack. Like seriously, or at least at least disclose that and say, you know, this isn't the kind of game that I typically enjoy. And then don't I... give it a negative because you don't like. Like God, it's so arrogant. Yeah, it's it's so it's so it's so selfish. It's like I don't like racing games. Okay, then why are you reviewing a racing game? Oh well, because you know I have to for my job, and and plus it'll get clicks, and I'm gonna give it an official rating of five out of ten because I really don't like racing games. But is it a good racing game? Oh, as far as everybody tells me, it's the greatest racing game ever made. But I'm going to give it a 5 because I think it's garbage. Because I don't like racing games. How pompous and how how much of a jackass do you have mm-hmm. to be to, to do that? Like, 
get on the farm and start pulling that plow because you you are officially the the jackass of all jackasses. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I've I've stepped out of my comfort zone with some other reviews I've done in the past, um, but I always try to say, you know, would I like this game if I was the type of person that played this type of game for fun? Mm-hmm. You know, I did a, I did a, I did a review for a racing game. I don't typically play racing games, but I particularly yeah. enjoyed this one, and so I thought it was pretty um, good. I- now, I'm going to have to step out of my comfort zone and step into uh, a, a new genre that I've never played before, uh, you know, trying out this uh, subverse game, you know, because, you know, it's, it's uh, apparently, you know, I, I just have no experience with any of this type of gameplay ever before. So it's, it's really, oh, it's really you, going to be a difficult You just one. look for reasons to bring, bring up subverse. I, I, I have no, 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 no. It's just, I just, just mentioning it. I, you know, it's something completely new that I've never played before. So, you know, it's right, right. Be really interesting. Doctor, um, but uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Dr. Infinite asks, so will you guys up, upload cyberpunk let's plays when it comes out? Absolutely. We will, mm-hmm. uh, we will be putting up cyberpunk content and probably, well, we have a to determine whether or not it's safe to live stream it or not, but um, just because of the, the nudity and stuff like that. Now mm-hmm. our let's plays, don't get a ton of viewership um but we there probably will be some but there's all kinds of other different kinds of content that we do as for, well for for those of you that are interested or i know and i know that a lot of our, our core fans like you guys know and you guys pop by every once in a while we do have a twitch channel and we do have a full-time twitch streamer and she streams um uh four times a week three four three, three times four. a week and then uh three times a week yeah yes. it's for our more yeah, she she streams uh, mostly Fortnite. Um, I've been on there with some Mario Maker recently. That's been a fun time. But yeah, we'll uh, there will be live streams. There will be let's mm-hmm. plays. There will probably be, probably be guides and some analysis stuff and just showcases of cool stuff. There will be we'll have tons of content. If you have seen the amount of Fallout Four content that we've done, um, you know when that bit when that game was big a few years ago, that's really how our channel started. And I'm envisioning that level of content or more yeah yeah we're gonna, Cyberpunk, we're gonna do... this is going to be a huge game there's going to be so many different ways to play it so many different styles so much to see i thought about i was thinking about what kinds of videos i would do and i was thinking like i could do one just going around and looking at all the ads and commenting on them and and talking about the artwork and 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 what it what it means within the game like there's so much potential for for all kinds of uh all kinds of content. America asks, will you be covering the Outer Worlds at all? Yes, absolutely. 100%. Yes, yes we will. Um, and, as, uh, as, again, as some of you know, I'm quite close with um, the studio. So, yes, absolutely, we'll be covering it, and we'll be doing guides on that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going we're gonna to try it. We're going to tackle it um, quite early on. I may be forced to buy a computer because I don't know if I'm going to be able to play it on... On, on your current rig, Windows, really? Yeah, on Windows 10. Uh, like, I, I don't have Windows 10, so I don't have the... Um, oh, so you don't have I'm Microsoft sure if I can... Store. Yeah, I, I'm not sure right, if I can... Right, because you, uh, you're, boy, you're on the full boycott, ban- uh, epic boycott bandwagon. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying screw screw them. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be, it'll be... It'll be a little bit interesting. Just a little bit interesting. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Obviously, obviously, I want to uh, get in that and and go ham on that. Um, and hopefully, the work will kind of calm down by the time that mm-hmm. that kicks into gear. So we'll see how that goes. I'm not um, I'm not a hundred hundred one hundred p not positive. So mm-hmm. you know, well, uh, as far as my schedule goes, obviously everybody else will be you know. Actually, be playing that the yeah. crap or that. Kuban Wilkie. We may even get yeah. We may even get Curie to play that a little bit too. Mm-hmm. Kuban Wilkie. Yes. Uh, as far as we know, the game, The Outer Worlds, will be available on the Microsoft Store. I mean, Microsoft owns. Uh, they own Obsidian now, and so yeah. Uh, as far as which uh, is which is, and again, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out here because again, it, it's a pet peeve of mine. Um, it was not Obsidian's choice. They had no say in the matter. When they signed the deal with their publisher, with 2K, Private Division, They the, the Epic Store was not a thing. Fortnite wasn't even a thing. Right? Mm-hmm. And they, they signed a deal, and the deal said, 
launching on Steam and other and other uh, um, launching on Steam slash multiple store multiple PC storefronts. And it, it did not specify that they were launching directly on to Steam, but it was named as the as the potential obviously one that they could. So it was a it was a slimy little gimmick that they didn't see coming, that nobody saw coming. I mean, who would have guessed that, that the whole epic situation would be where it is from just two years ago, let alone three, let alone four. Mm-hmm. Like crying out loud, like zero, zero heads up on this, right? They did not expect this at all, and then suddenly it's like, oh, hey, by the way, we're we're not letting you release on Steam. What? Wait, why? Why not? Why not? Oh, well, you know, because we don't want to. <laughs> no, well, because they got those they got those Epic Games dollars, but they they weren't yeah. able to pry it out of Microsoft hand Microsoft's hands completely, and so. Uh, and and again. <sighs> You know, again, you you have to understand that if if people say, oh, they were just greedy, you know, that the one guy that um, one of the heads heads of, of Obsidian has a kind of a bad rap from some stuff in the past, and they said, oh, you know, he's being greedy, he's being a P- POS, and and you know, it, it was all him. No, it wasn't. If they wanted a hundred percent of the profits, all they would have done was launch it on the Microsoft Store, like. Um, for example, like um, this, this, this Sea of Thieves, right? Like uh, the, the zombie game. Came, I can't remember the name of it. The, the zombie game that came out this year uh, or last year. They would have just released onto that. If they really wanted 100% of the profits, they would have released there. Like, please, 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 please. And I, some people were like, well, it's their fault for being stupid and signing a stupid deal. It was an industry standard deal. It was an industry standard thing. They, you, I, you would not have seen this coming any more than anybody else would have. Mm-hmm. Now, the funny thing is, the funny thing is, is there's, a, there's some talk going on right now where Microsoft is talking about opening up and having a cross-sale service between Steam and their Microsoft Store. So basically, you buy it on... The Microsoft Store, you buy it on Steam, and you can play it on the other the other service. So here's the funny thing, and this hasn't been cemented yet, but they're really trying to push this. They have to be a little bit careful to not get into legal hot water because the last thing we want is for the the game to be uh, to to be forced to not sell while this legal battle goes on. No, nobody wants that kind of a thing. But if they can work this out. You're going to be able to, when the game comes out, you're going to be able to go over to the Microsoft Store, buy the game over there, download it, and play it on Steam. Which means you can also play it on GOG. Because <laughs> <laughs> you'll be able so, to use your GOG so 2.0 the, launcher. The money, the money that Epic poured into Private Division, which very little, of mon- little, very little of that money saw its way over to Obsidian, might just end up backfiring on them in this Epic... <laughs> pardon the pun, hilarious blunder, hmm. which would just be so funny and would totally be shots fired and and would honestly be really, really hilarious. And honestly, I, I please, please, I keep, I you know, I keep sending it, like, do it, guys, do it. If you can do it, do it. M- make Epic bleed out the nose for this. Make it, make it so they, they, they step back and say, okay, 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 you know, uh, make them scream uncle, all right? If if you if you remember the playground, you know, you get in a tuffle tussle and you, you get somebody's arm back and you put them down on the ground and they slap in the ground screaming, Uncle, Uncle, Uncle. It's that that's that's what you want. Do that to Epic. Make them cry, make them bleed. Do the, do this to as many different games as you possibly can. And and you, you know, really set this up. I think it would honestly be well, really I, hilarious. I, it's kind of a technicality that it's even possible that this might happen. It's a technicality that the game is available on the Microsoft Store. So. It's not a technicality. They they um, that was hard fought. Like that was extremely hard fought. Oh, I um, thought it was just that. Oh no Epic no they didn't they want to they take, uh, take Microsoft to task. So so what happened is that the the day that Private Division called up Obsidian and said, "Oh hey guys, we're going to Epic Epic exclusive." They immediately saw how 
this was going to be bad and they immediately saw how this was going to be negative because they were up in like, like just that the uh the like 24 48 hours previous to that they were uploading um stuff onto the steam system for for preparing for the launch and it, they were updating the, the client info because they were getting this game ready to start you know, to, to, they were getting their ducks in a row to get it launched out onto Steam. And then they were told no. And they realized that this was going to be a bad thing. They're not, they don't like this exclusive thing. They think it's a bad idea. It's bad for money. And so they called Microsoft and they said, hey, um, because Microsoft doesn't own the this particular aspect of, of Obsidian. They, they didn't include this in the thing because because again this is really weird microsoft wanted to give obsidian the right to be able to publish this game and make uh money off of it themselves right they didn't want to step in and say ha we now control this ip well, they were they being, already had they it. were being microsoft was being a white um you know the white knight doesn't uh doesn't the connotation doesn't mean what most people think it means anymore they were being um they were being a perfect gentleman saying, I'm not going to walk in here and take your prize possession. Uh, I'm going to let you keep that. That is yours. That is your thing. You do it with it what you want. And Mark, and and Obsidian said, well, well, thank you. This is really nice of you. This was really good because if we, they split off from, from Microsoft down the road or if they all the people leave the studio after it gets canned or destroyed or whatever, they can continue on with this IP. However... Private division said, "Ah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna sell this exclusive on on Epic." So then they called the lo- the lawyers over at Microsoft, and they like like in in I'm told that in like eight hours they had uh, basically like crammed this lawsuit, potential lawsuit, and this potential like order saying, "No, no, no, it's coming onto the the uh, it's coming onto the Windows Store, and we can we can sell it and do what we want with it as well." And they managed to get that at the last possible minute. Because it, it, if you look at the announcement stuff, it looks really does look like the Windows Store thing was kind of crammed in at the last second on the graphic. And because it was, it was literally crammed in at the last second. And Private Division was really upset about this. Epic was really upset about this because you could still get it on, off of, and, and they wanted 100% exclusivity. Because, you know, they're dicks. So, mm-hmm. anyway. Yes. So, so yes. long story. Long, long story, story we, short, we've it hashed will this be, out a couple yeah. times before, yeah. uh, but but just kind of for all the new people, putting that out. That that is all the behind the scenes stuff that that you know, yeah. without going like too in depth. That's that's basically all the stuff behind the scenes. That was and, I'm not uh, going in depth. Just for the yeah. for those of you listening. So uh, right yeah, there. Epics. Uh, anyway, so the Other Worlds will be available on the Microsoft Store, but you might have to have Windows 10 in order for that yeah. to work. So that's why Saib was saying he might need to uh, might need, might to, need to upgrade his PC because he tried upgrading to Windows 10 and that was a disaster. <laughs> it was uh, it was uh, yeah. it was a disaster. All my programs stopped working. I have a lot of programs for work related stuff and the consulting work related stuff, and uh, yeah, that all stopped uh, working and there was issues and all kinds of stuff. So I said nope. Nope, 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 nope. I am <laughs> definitely going back. I am never doing this again. Screw you. You know, I was really unhappy with Microsoft at the time because it was, it was, it was, ugh, it was bad. Yeah. But anyways, it's it's better now. I and I I I could swap over to it, but I'm gonna need to keep a secondary computer running um, to do other stuff with. Terrica but Winnegan. It's definitely not illegal. Yeah. Uh... What? Okay, never mind. Uh, Terika Winnegan, I guess, uh, says, I guess you're not going to be covering Gears 5. Uh, if you want some Gears 5 content, and, you know, if there's if there's demand I'm for tempted. it, if there's demand yeah. for it, we definitely will. I mean, there's there's always way more games than we're able to get to. But uh, yeah. if you specifically want some, you know, let us know on the Discord server. We have a content requests area. Let us know what you want to see. Mm-hmm. And let us know the types of contents you want to see. Like, when Cyberpunk comes out, let us know. You want to see Let's Plays? You want to see guides? You want to see uh, analysis of the world or you know what you want to see as far as that game goes okay our last topic for the day there's a new lord of the rings mmo that's been announced now this was actually announced in 2018 and uh it was announced 
by a company that was owned, um, uh, sorry, it's Athlon Games, a, a game publisher, and they said they had this game in the works with a partner, and it turns out that that partner is Amazon, and so it's now being reported that Amazon is is developing this Lord of the Rings MMO in conjunction with Leyu, and I'll get into who they are in a moment. But anyway, this is a game that's going to be uh, set at a time long before the events of the Lord of the Rings. So it's going to be way back in the history of Middle Earth. Oh, are they doing Silmarillion? It's going to be that kind of era, I think. So, oh, I mean, I don't know if they're going to be following that. So cool. I don't know if they'll be following that storyline, but it's... Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, just to, I mean, obviously they probably won't, but I mean, like, like, okay, so the, the Balrog, right? And, and the dragons, it's like in the Lord of the Rings time, for those of you who haven't read the Silmarillion, um, in, in the Silmarillion time, which was like thousands of, or, it was a good long chunk before the events of the Lord of the Rings. Like there were dozens upon dozens of Balrogs everywhere. And there was hundreds of dragons and there was vast armies that just fought everywhere so this is interesting okay i i missed that i heard originally like oh yeah they're doing it and i was like oh they're rebooting the lord of the rings mmo okay no, cool. yeah well it's it's not uh no it's not gonna be lord of the rings online in fact it seems like they're trying to distinguish from that but anyway it mm -hmm. is uh, this actually connects to warframe in an interesting way because so amazon and Leyu are partnering on this project Leyu is basically it's a holdings company that owns the company I mentioned before, Athlon Games. It also owns two developers, Splash Damage and Digital Extremes. And you may recognize Digital Extremes as the developer of Warframe. So it's connected in that way. Now, they bought Digital Extremes. They became a part owner in 2015, and they bought the whole thing in 2016. So if... I mean, and as we talked about how Digital Extremes is doing things right with Warframe. So if any of that sort of travels up the up the grapevine and uh you know if they do this game in a similar in a similar way they do things right with it could be pretty amazing it's got amazon's money behind it what we don't know is who is actually developing it we haven't been able to find any information on that we don't know if it's going to be uh one of you know uh, digital extremes or splash damage we don't know um like I said, it was announced originally back in 2018 by Athlon Games, but they're a publisher. I don't know that. I don't believe they have a development wing. So anyway, we don't know who is actually going to be developing the game. Let's hope it's not a mobile game because there was a lot of talk about this like one Game of Thrones game that was coming to mobile, and it's garbage. It's hot, stinking garbage. It's just trash. It's the, it's one of the worst mobile games I've ever seen. Uh, so yeah, um, I, I don't think it'll be that. I think it'll be like more traditional. Actually, not traditional because if it's Amazon's behind it, then they're going to be utilizing the new server tech, and this will be about probably another two years out at the earliest. Mm -hmm. So this means that we're probably going to see um, super servers uh, with super zones, which means that we're like talking like you're going to go out into a battle and you're going to have like, you know, hundred thousand units on the battle and and you're going to be one of those hundred thousands so that that's really interesting um the type of yeah. game that i dreamed about when i was a child yeah we're, we're getting closer to that um this is also good because if it, if this is going to be coming out in like say three years from now then this will be close to the kind of like the second generation of this type of tech so they're going to be able to implement a lot of like fixes and changes because while again that sounds great right off the top it is in fact a, has a little bit more issues to it than just that all right and i think so, that about yeah. does it for our show today it's been a we've covered a lot of ground we have covered a lot of topics on today's show so uh thank you all for bearing with us and uh, keeping along with us as we talk about a variety of things and went on a variety of tangents it's been a more laid-back show, which I, which I think is good. I mean, we've had some more intense topics recently, so yeah. I'm glad we could it, do it. Was also a, I'm also running on, like, 
Oh, 3% battery power. My, my little red light is blinking on and on and on. And no, I'm not talking about the computer. I'm talking about my brain. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's, uh, it's, um, yeah, so it's yeah. good to get that we could do a, a more casual show. But anyway, thank you so much, everybody, for listening and for the great conversation in the chat. Before you leave, don't forget to slam that like button. It tells us and YouTube that you appreciate this content and also subscribe for tons of content. Join our Discord server, become a part of the community there. You know, talk to people and let us know what you want to see on the channel, that kind of a thing. Uh, we, we love talking to everybody there. And also, I want to especially thank our Patreon supporters, Shannon Vega, Old Man Manson, Evolution, and our two anonymous supporters, as well as all of our channel members who help us. Uh, they grease the wheels financially, if you will, but also all of you who, uh, who share this content, who like the content and subscribe. And I one of the greatest things you can do is by sharing our content with other people that you know on your other online communities. That means a lot to us, and it just helps the channel grow. So thank you for, for doing that so much. If you're listening after the fact on one of the audio platforms, SoundCloud, iTunes, Pod Podcast, Spotify, or any of the other places that it goes to, uh, thank you so much as well. We appreciate your subscriptions and likes on those platforms as well. And hey, feel free to join us Wednesday nights and Saturday mornings. That's North American time for the live show where you can interact with us and other listeners and be a part of the discussion. The Augmented Reality Podcast is a presentation of the Triple S League. Check out our YouTube channel for game guides, reviews, comedy, news updates, and tons more quality gaming content. My name is Ashen Unity. On behalf of Cybsidian, thank you all so much for listening. We'll talk to you very soon. <laughs>